So you 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 started work at the Sun, photographing the royal family in 1977. Is that yeah, correct? Yeah, well, that's when I started the royal family. I joined the paper in '74, mm -hmm. but um, and I didn't want to do the job when it was given to me. I thought, oh my god, you know, where do I start? But um, slowly I got into it, and um, the very aggressive times then, you know, in the, in the 70s and 80s, and you know, with great competition amongst the papers for readers, and it was very aggressive. But you know, I, I survived it, and. I always remember the day that he got engaged to uh, Princess Diana, Lady Diana. I sent Harry Arnold and I sent him a telegram saying, "Congratulations on your uh, marrying, uh, engaged to, to Lady Diana. I hope you both be very happy." He sent us one back the next day saying, "Thanks for your kind messages. Hope you won't be made redundant." <laughs> <laughs> but you know, but, but, but far that, from it, really. Far from it. Oh, so I've never worked so hard in my I life. I have a lot yeah. more pictures to take. Yeah. So, so, so obviously. You know, you, you, one of the things you have said is that this is your life's ambition, to live, to see Charles King and to get to take a picture of him after he's, um, after he's um, had the, you know, the anointing and the bestowing of the crown and the coronation. And here you are. That's right. I've done a piece for the paper tomorrow uh, of Saturday saying that. I never thought I'd see this because, you know, I, was, I mean, I'm 82 now. I never thought that this would happen. But, you know, that, I mean, I've kept fit, kept well. And, uh, and, and you know, I... Thought the Queen was going to like, go to 100, you know, it's like, like a mother, you know. And uh, But um, no, the, the King, I mean, I've watched him now for the, since he's been given this job, this job he waited 70 years for. And he's had a really great start, Vanessa. He's been, I've been all over the country with him and the crowds have been huge, you know, and supportive of him. There's been a few demonstrations and a few eggs, in fact. <laughs> When we were in Bolton, he said to me, beware the eggs, he said, but then we've got to worry when they throw ostrich eggs at us. <laughs> also true. <laughs> yeah, also also, true yeah. so, so what do you think of him as a, as a human being? Because obviously uh, well, you've, you've seen him in all the moments where we haven't. Yeah. So what have you seen, do you think? Well, uh, mainly he's a very humble man. You know, you think that uh, you, he refuses to accept praise for the work he does. You know, I once said to him, why can't you take a compliment? He can't. He's just determined to do his best for as many people as possible. And so many people he helps with us we never hear about. So many, I mean, people are thankful for his intervention. You know, he's used that power of when he was Prince of Wales to make things happen for people, not only here. I remember we were in Krakow and uh, it was in the Jewish area of Krakow and they didn't have anywhere to teach their children. And uh, he came back to England. He contacted, I think, the Jewish Relief and, uh, uh, and they came to see him and they had two dinners. They raised the money. He went to both dinners, supported it, and they built the centre and he went out and opened it. And I went with him and, and it, to see people were crying there, you know, they just never thought it'd happen. You know, no one knows about that. I know about it. I saw it, you know, um, but that's what he was like. And he, he never, ever, ever, ever has said, when I'm king, because he's very humble. He said, that day, if I said that, that's the day my mother dies, mm. he said, and I don't want that to happen, you know. So, um, <sighs> He's better. had a great start. The crowds have been huge for him. He's not changed one bit. He's exactly how he was when he was the Prince of Wales. Charming, happy, makes try and make people laugh, tries to interact with them. And, and they're also, most people are starstruck, obviously, but he's brilliant with them. And, you know, and I just find, I just find it's a joy working with him. When I've got to wake up in the morning, I've got a job with him or, or Camilla. Yeah, that was my next queen. question, because oh. many people have said, and you never know whether it's true or whether they just would like it to be true, but lots of people have said that she makes the king very happy, that she stabilises him, that if he looks like he might be losing his temper over something, she's very quickly there with a reassuring, you know, hand on his the small of his back, that she's good-humoured, down-to-earth, understands how everything works and has just made everything so much brighter and better with her presence. Would you agree? Absolutely. In fact, I can tell you a story when we're Mallet Moore in the west coast of Ireland where Lord Mountbatten was blown up. And I had to get a picture of him looking at the scene where it was, where the, blow, where the, where the accident happened, where the, the murder happened. And uh, I said, would you stand over there, sir? And he said, no. He said, why? And before he, I could answer, Camilla said, come on, darling, let's do it. Mm. And he did it. And, um, and it published in every paper the next day. So it, he probably would not have done it but for her. And... And, and she, but she had the instinct. She knew what I wanted to do. He was obviously full of thoughts about his great uncle. He was probably thinking about that day yeah. and, and, and deep in thought. And, and, and I was probably insensitive, but you know, when you've, 
you've got to get it, you've got to get it. And, uh, but that's, that's how he is. But she's calmed him down. And that's several occasions. I mean, recently with the ink and the pen, she calmed him down immediately. And, uh, but they laugh a lot. And they've been married 17 years yeah. now and they still love each other. And I think that's really nice. And, you know, it always refers to her as my darling wife. And, I mean, that's lovely. And, you know, she is never lost a common touch. You know, she's always, I don't know, she's, she's just, she was one of us for many years, for most of her life. And then she got this role, you know, as, as the... Duchess of Cornwall. I don't, don't suppose any of us have ever felt that she really craved it or coveted no, it. It, no. it. It's come with the man that she loves. That's right. And so she's doing it. Yeah. But you've never felt that she's wanted to be, no. you know, at centre stage of life at all, has she? No. Really? The thing is, Vanessa, she totally supports him. You know, she yeah. doesn't outshine him. She just slots in and, and uh, she's there for him all the time. And, um, you know, it's, it's a tough job, that. You know, it's a lonely life. You've got to make these decisions and... and you know, watched him over the years, you know, I kind of was a bit aggressive with him in them early years, but slowly I watched him work. You know, he's a very much a visionary. When he was going on about organic food and yeah, people, people were going crazy. He was crazy. Yeah, crazy. And look what's and, happened now. Well, you can't move in the shops right yeah, now. And, yeah. uh, and and he was going on about poor architecture. And, and then I saw the Prince's Trust, you know, I used to go to the annual awards every year. I'm sure you went to them. Yes. And, uh, and uh, you know, and see the, you know, people in tears, but it turned these lives around, these young people. Mm -hmm. And he was brilliant. I remember being in Colchester once and, well, a, a Prince's Trust event, this girl came up and kissed him. And I said, what did you do that for? She said, before the Prince's Trust, she said, I was going nowhere. I had a, was a single mother, I had nowhere to live, and I was living on benefits. Now I've got my own business, thanks to the Prince's Trust. And he did that for thousands and thousands, well, a million people. And so. I think we're all so used to it that we sort of imagine that he had to do it, but of course he didn't. No, he didn't. He, he invented didn't. it, he yeah. created it, it was his brainchild. Right. If he uh, hadn't, if he'd wanted to drink pina coladas on a sunbed yeah. somewhere, he could or, have done it. Yeah, or play, play get or at play his polo. club and drink yeah. champagne all day. No. Yeah. And of course, when, uh, you know, Dumfries House, I mean, that's another thing there. I mean, it's the second biggest employer in the area. He's got, he's got apprenticeships for catering, he's got apprenticeships for engineering, he's got apprenticeships for sewing and stuff. I mean, it's amazing what he's doing there and he's got young people involved, you know, in a poor area of Scotland and he's transformed it. 